I think that as all of us uh, look at the, the uh, situation in which we find ourselves in the future, I think all of us here either identify ourselves as uh, Afro-Americans, or African-Americans, or Negro, Black, or color, and um, which means that in the spectrum of mankind, we identify with a particular ethnic group, African people, I would suspect that the best thing about race is that it gives you mirrors. Probably the most significant thing about race is it gives you mirrors that you wouldn't have otherwise. It gives you mirrors. Because if, if the dynamic in one group is functioning, it mirrors the lack of dynamics in another group. And the race, the race, the ethnic, ethnicity probably generates the justice dialogue faster than anything else that's on a social plane. Because the inequities shows up in sin. And uh, you have a framework, you have a dynamic framework. So like families, you have, in, in, a, in, a, in a world community, you have ethnic group in you, which are like families in a community, or within a block. And uh, it gives you a context in which to mirror the shortcomings and the disparity of faith in one group that over against another group. And so this, this preacher here, this preacher here is talking about uh, a particular group. And he, he asked me to take a look at, at something that somehow, somehow this group has drifted away from caring for their health and uh, they, they, they have lost uh, the sense of the need to work for their health, that, that individual and collective need to work for their health and their, their intellectual world of development. Health and intellectual development. And um, they weren't working at that no more. These folks can stop working at that. And as a result of that, they became a worthless people. They became scattered. And each person was looking for a way to acquire physical comfort and convenience. And that thing then that was called community is no longer a viable sustenance giving process. Because all these folks have stopped looking after their health and intellectual development. And that's what they that's what they even this group of people, that's what their whole revolution was about in, in Egypt. And the whole need of Egypt was to go and say, hey, we ain't got time to uh, work for these cats up here. Look how, look how diabolical and sick and ignorant and vulgar and funky we are and illiterate and illicit. And look at the high rate of mortality, disease, and the lack of development, and all of us are selling labor and only getting some food for our labor. This is not a, a proper way for folks to live. Let's go somewhere and work on our health and our intellectual development. And these folks were often worked on their health and intellectual development, and then they drifted away from that. So when we look out into Cleveland and the ghetto today, we find the same thing. When we look at the black folks in America, <laughs> we find the same thing. And I said, well, where is the group? Where is the community? Where is the church? Where is the organization? The intellectual organization, the academic organization, the research scientific organization, the political organization, the social service organization, uh, the economic development organization among our people. That agenda is health and intellectual development of the people. Because I like to take a membership out right now. Where is that group? You have to ask that now. What is the answer? Well, it's as you know. Oh, right. I'm always at that. But somebody may have all this like that with a little membership card right in their pocket right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> you. Do you know such organization? 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 What about you? What about you, my brother? An organization among our people who is health and intellectual development of our people is their agenda. They ain't got no other agenda. See, that's all they need to do about it. We're going to help them the of our people. If each of us could come to that conclusion, so that puts us in the church dilemma, doesn't it? Because that means that each of us who come to that conclusion 
based on your own intelligence and integrity, then you have some responsibility to do that. If you say it's needed, right, and you say it doesn't exist, then your responsibility, your first responsibility is how to do what? I do that. If it, if it is needed, now this is how, this is how organization and movement get started, that through honesty, you arrive at the truth. The question then is, once you arrive at the truth, do you continue to follow the old lie, or do you assume responsibility for the truth? See, that's, that's how the, the intellectual development process starts. That if we have concluded that this is the dilemma, that there is no institutional process in and among our people that works exclusively and conclusively for health and intellectual development of our people, then it becomes our responsibility to put that kind of mechanism together. Post haste. That becomes our responsibility because based on the dilemma we are in down here and based on the closing down of the American cities, the American cities at this point are closing down because the Europeans who develop these cities died. And their sons don't want them particularly. And they're reinvesting their intellectual energies and scientific energies in the sun belt and in smaller, uh, smaller industry with diversified uh, energy base. Well, that's an electrical energy base. So they're not going to use the cities. And here we find ourselves having been tricked off of our land over the last 50 years to come what we call north and gave up our economic basis, which was land, oil deposits, coal deposits, mineral deposits, agricultural production basis, timber production basis. Gave up those bases to take jobs because of the little we go. So we took jobs rather than fighting in the South for the right to be educated correctly and the right to participate in the political process, we took the cheat out, we took jobs. And we came uh, and fought, came after worthlessness, and what has happened to us? Well, we become worthless. The question is like, what are we gonna do about that? is to do something about a definite problem you have stifled and causes the intellect not to develop. Y'all hear me on that point? You see a question unanswered, you say it's a question unanswered, and you don't deal with it, your intellect continues to follow the old line that it has always followed. Intellectual development starts when you personally assume responsibility to answer a question, to solve a problem, under full good of the need. 